Sound art is a product that is a speaker and it's art. We combine it together and we call it sound art. What makes it so unique that any picture can be your speaker? Sound art gives you the high quality sound without the ugly speaker. This isn't a picture with the speaker, the picture is the speaker. Just imagine your wedding picture uh, uploaded onto a canvas and now it's speaking 10,000 tunes. I mean, it's a very cool concept. What we like so much about it that you can take anything that means something very special to you, upload it on the canvas, have it hanging up in your room, your balcony, wherever you want to put it, and now it's a speaker. I mean, how cool is that? It's, it's, it's something that we have that, and no one has. No one has this product. It's just a great gift to give anybody. It's just a neat concept. Around here we say, art never sounded so good. After months of quarantine, we're all interested in how we can become our best self. The team at Permanent Makeup and Cryo is here to help you get the flawless makeup look every day without the extra effort or time. When it comes to your appearance, you deserve the best care that money can buy. We may not have started the season with Cross Series League Racing way back in the winter of 2021, but we've witnessed a tumultuous and exciting spring that leaves us with just two very different and very dynamic races to go. Welcome to Cross Series League Racing on Pit Stop TV. Andrew Cardinale with JP Costa and Emerson Arden on the crew this evening. Races 1 through 14 leave us with compelling stories throughout, though we do have breaking news to get us started through the evening. We welcome you once again to our Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter coverage this evening as we finally get to share with you the news that Adam Thompson, as of last week's race at Lime Rock Park, has in fact clinched the Cross Series League Racing Championship. Battle then is on for second place and on back. 60 laps of distance around this tiny L-shaped road course in West Virginia will help settle it all. This is how it looks coming in. Second place, Mike Sorum. He's got the same amount of points up to Adam Thompson as his car number, but he's only got 20 back to Robert Schwenkler now. That, that honestly is a good little cushion. That's 10 races, uh, sorry, 10 points a race rather, just about, but... If Mike Sorum does not execute this evening and Robert Schwenkler does, that puts the driver of the 69 on the hot seat for that second spot in the championship, a position that he's held all the way back to the time, all the way back to Limeland when we came on with XSLR. There's a lot of battles going on. You see them all here on your screen. We do have more news, though. It's rare that we get to share multiple breaking headlines with you guys as we open up, open up a broadcast, but we will not have Jerry DiPiero or Bobby Ross in the field this evening, and I want to just start the broadcast off from here by wishing Bobby Ross the best. Hopefully a quick and speedy recovery. Hopefully it's nothing too bad. Now, I'm actually not entirely aware of his injuries, but he was racing his uh, shifter car earlier today. I don't know where. He was having a great day until the cart flipped. I don't believe the injuries are serious. I'm not trying to make anybody panic or anything like that. He's currently dr being driven home from the hospital by Jerry DiPiero. So it's good enough that he was admitted and quickly released. So everything should be okay with Bobby Ross. He's hurt. He's a little banged up. But the hope is that he is back with us next week 
for Spec Racer Fords at Laguna Seca. And it's rare, actually. I think this is the first time I've had to mention an injury in any kind of broadcast. Uh, it's very weird to do so in a sim racing broadcast, but very glad that uh, the news is really so far positive around Bobby Ross, a uh, longtime competitor here in XSLR. So hopefully he's doing all right. Hopefully he's watching this evening. And uh, buddy, the best to you. I do want to quickly move straight into our track map like usual then, JP Costa. This is the 1.1 mile configuration we're working with this evening. This is different from most races you'll see at Summit Point Motorsports Park. That said, if you've come up through the ranks in iRacing, if you mess around with those rookie Miatas a good bit, you may be pretty familiar with this course, whether you're turning right for, well, right into what is turn nine on this configuration uh, for the first time for turn number one or hooking right around the hairpin that we see as turn one this evening. You can run this course then in two different right directions. That's what I'm trying to get at. So you can start with the hairpin like we are this evening in turn one, then around kind of the bulbous turn two and turn three, a, a mini S's section down the opposite straight into turn four, a fast compression sweeper that takes you uphill and quickly towards turn five, another sweeper with a tightening radius down to turn six. You have to get down hard into second gear through the S's in 7, 8, and 9 to take you to the pit straight and complete the lap. It's a fun course here, JP, but it's an easy one to mess up. It's also, I think, going to be rewarding for those guys who do figure this one out quick. Yeah, exactly. This is an extremely fun circuit to race on the Miatas, but don't be mistaken, it's an extremely tight and extremely challenging at the same time to be racing. I guess this is one of the best summit point configurations to do uh, races at all because it provides great overtaking opportunities, great side-by-side -side opportunities, and overall just great racing with extremely challenging corners. As you mentioned, the compression zone on turn four, turns five and six, you know, you kind of just turning in and breaking. Obviously, we're in the Miatas, but still, it reminds me of the turns 14, turns 11, sorry, of the Paul Ricard circuit in F1. So it's still extremely, extremely challenging. I'm sure we're going to have a blast seeing these Miatas and these drivers battling out here tonight. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. This is a personal favorite, and I actually gave Adam and uh, Robert Schwenkler the, the idea, the recommendation for this course anyway. I love this course. This is a fantastic little road course here. Uh, both the main summit point configuration and this Jefferson circuit, but the Jefferson circuit really is fantastic, especially for Miatas like this. Even the Spec Racer Fords that we're racing next week, they'd be good here as well, I think. Uh, just fantastic. I think this is a highly underrated road course in the whole of America uh, in general, just some at point in general, but also this Jefferson Circuit is a fantastic little piece of tarmac. That said, we're getting ready to conclude our qualifying coverage already as uh, we just get it started. Robert Schwenkler currently on pole. These guys, I do believe, have already set all of their available laps. They're just running around getting some extra times. The one guy who might still be on the clock is Jimmy Howitt, who sits in fourth as we speak. Jimmy Howitt had an absolutely amazing race last week, finished second place, and right now I'm pretty sure he's going to be trying to emulate that result, but obviously everything starts in qualifying, and we know it's a very, very important session. doesn't matter how easy the track is, but as you can see, it's still very challenging. If you miss just a tiny bit of the corner, you're going to be compromised as he heads now into the main straight, and he's going to be finishing his lap, and hopefully he can improve from the fourth place he finds himself right now. He'll head down to turn number one, and that will conclude his qualifying attempt. And it looks like Robbie Larill is also done. So everybody's got their times in, and, and that will then do it for everybody's timed attempts. I'm not sure if Larill is holding the session up. I, I doubt it, but uh, he is rolling, as you can see, in reverse. And this actually brings up a pretty valid point here, JP. There are very few walls around this course, uh, this Jefferson Circuit. It shares one wall here, actually, with Summit Point's more pronounced more uh, renowned course i suppose this would be turn four well it was turn four of the main course that was uh looking at the sweeper of turn two into turn three of the jefferson circuit this evening this is down the back stretch you don't see any walls in fact you could go from front stretch to back stretch here with very little trouble and vice versa it's very easy to get sent out into some trees thankfully we don't have physical trees these guys can hit they're just there for the effect but Boy, would it be interesting if you can actually lodge your car in a tree trunk on iRacing. 
Yeah, exactly. Even though we don't have walls, sometimes that can bite you because your car is just going to be running endless, endlessly wide on the grass because there's absolutely no grip. And unfortunately, some of those trees find themselves, I guess we can call them black holes that send you magically back into the pits. But hopefully we're not going to be seeing any drivers struggling that much. But it's going to be interesting to see, you know, even though we don't have walls, it's still going to be challenging to keep the cars between the dark stuff. Yeah, I, again, I, I really like this circuit. It, it provides so many interesting and unique challenges, and it's it's ta it's small. Again, if, if we bring the the track intro back up, uh, the track info rather, 1.1 miles. This is a tiny little course here in West Virginia. I, I'm very much looking forward to it, and I can't wait to see how these guys do. Now we do have a smaller field this evening. Only 11 cars have checked in so far. I doubt that's going to change, but uh, we do have 60 laps the distance, as I mentioned previously. That will be a bit of an endurance race. Certainly attrition going to be top of these drivers' minds. And we expect at least one pit stop for these drivers as well. That's going to be interesting with how small pit road is here. So a lot of interesting, unique challenges will be presented. But this, this will be fantastic racing through and through. Yeah, exactly. Even though it's a 60 lap race, we're going to be seeing under a minute lap time. So essentially a one hour race on the Miatas. That is, Andrew, consider, in my point of view, an endurance race. So these drivers are going to have to keep themselves on top of their games for essentially an hour. And avoiding mistakes is going to be an absolute must. So obviously in the beginning, it might not be all out attack for some drivers, but we're definitely going to be seeing mixing strategies all throughout the field. And look at this, we even get a warm-up session to just see how these cars will do a little bit before they go racing. So they got their qualifying session in, done and dusted. They get kind of a second practice right here, 10 minutes. They get an opportunity to familiar, familiarize themselves with the cars and the racetrack and each other. And this is a fantastic opportunity for these guys to get a bit more comfortable watching James Truett, Chet Durannick, and Robert Swinkler head down to turn 5 and 6 for the first time. And this is our first opportunity to see cars on the racetrack together. Yeah, exactly. This is going to be amazing for not only us, obviously, watching. As you can see, some drivers are already trying to see where they can go side by side. And apparently, they're willing to go the full circuit. But obviously, oh, as you can see, just running a bit wide. That's just how easy it is to make a mistake. But it's amazing for these drivers to get that extra bit of practice, you know, to not be caught up in surprise. And obviously, getting that extra track time, I'm pretty sure nobody's going to be complaining about that. Seeing these guys get up to speed, get some laps in, or well, get some laps started anyways, and this will be a nice little preview of some of the racing we can expect. And uh, these Miatas, when they got the new tire model here on iRacing, they were a little bit skatey, pretty hard to drive. Not that Miatas aren't generally a little bit tricky to drive, but they're they're trickier to go fast and easier to just lap, I, I, I think is a fair way to put it. As Schwenkler, he's going to go off after some grass, and you see he gets sucked into one of those black holes that JP was just talking about. So you've got to be careful once you go off track, and you can't go too far. But what I'm getting at is Miatas are definitely tricky to go fast in, but they are pretty well rookie or at least amateur cars for a reason they're a bit easier to handle they're fantastic driving cars but you can still certainly separate the pros from the rookies based on speed because even if a rookie can lap decently close to a pro there's gonna be those extra few tenths that the pro ekes out so while it is a pretty stable car what i'm trying to get at is recent updates have made this car more stable more usable for the general iRacing user base. A little while back, it was pretty icy, pretty skatey. It's gotten very, very fun lately. This is a fantastic little car to go racing in. I would not be opposed. I mean, uh, if, if Adam's listening, I wouldn't be opposed to a full season of this, to be entirely honest. These cars are just so perfectly well poised around the racetrack. Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure you said it all. You know, I'm pretty sure iRacing got the essence of the MX-5 of the little Miatas on iRacing. You know, it's not a very powerful car, but it's still a lot of fun to drive. And you can learn a lot in road racing just driving these cars. You know, you're not... Sometimes you're just going to be staying on the rookies and on fixed setups, but you can learn a lot on the basics of road racing just by driving these cars. And as you mentioned, it's easy for someone to lap within i guess a shooting range of the top drivers but you're going to be seeing the difference you know just in consistency smoothness of these cars because even though they don't have enough power to kind of spin the wheels on exit you kind of do see the consistency that smoothness that the top drivers do have but still even for someone that just has started on iRacing this is going to be a fantastic experience 
And of course, if you watch Spec Miata Racing, if you're any kind of familiar with it, you'll know that draft battles are very common, especially at racetracks like, for example, Road Atlanta, Road America, Watkins Glen, and others. Draft battles are the essence of Spec Miata Racing. The difference, I think, this evening, of course, some differences in setups, that's, that's pretty normal, but also... This is a smaller racetrack. You'll have some draft down the front and back straightaways, but that's not going to be the difference maker on these laps. It might help you make an overtake into turn four, but the difference here, I think, is going to become lap traffic. I think that is the dynamic that we're going to gain as opposed to losing that draft. Of course, if you think of Road America, if you have a just 60 minute sprint thereabouts you might not even get too much lap traffic because a lot of the field will be together and even if they separate a little bit at the front you'll have smaller groups that are able to draft around and don't lose so much time this evening we're definitely going to see lap traffic even with only 11 cars the track can get pretty crowded pretty quick so we're losing one dynamic gaining another and i think it's gonna be a lot of fun especially compared to the lime rock park last week you can use a little more draft, I feel like, there. Certainly not like Road America, but a little more than we'll see this evening. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, exactly. And due to the nature of this track, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be seeing a lot of drivers fuel saving as well, even though it's 60 laps. You know, you kind of do remove a bit of that aspect. Some drivers obviously just prefer to go all out attack. But, you know, as you mentioned, 60 laps traffic management is going to be a must if you not only, I guess, want to keep your car intact, but obviously want to keep yourself fast because it's, I guess, it's just a matter of time until you hit traffic. And I guess at one point we might be seeing drivers managing two, three, four cars per lap and trying to keep your lap time and your focus up while lapping those cars is going to be a, a big, big challenge other than the racetrack itself. We do see our confirmed champion on the speedway currently. He may actually race. Now, I know, I know there were conversations initially about him uh, pulling race control for the event and not racing, but it looks like he's on the racetrack. Looks like he uh, may race this one this evening. Regardless, I want to give a quick thank you to the partners here at Cross Series League Racing. You'll see some of them on his car this evening, but, uh, boy, the, the list has been growing recently, hasn't it, JP? We'll start off then with Nexus Fab. Nexus Fabrication provides custom medical, metal rather fabrication and manufacturing for commercial projects, residential projects, custom projects, sign, furniture, repair work, and more. Uh, Dangerous is a top 3D visualization firm specializing in high 3D, high quality 3D product, CAD, package rendering services, and photorealistic product visuals. They specialize in automotive subjects and have an extensive industrial and consumer product design experience. Let them help you visualize, promote, and communicate your designs. Visit their website at Dangerous.net. Again, that is Dangerous.net, just like you see it on our graphic, Danger USS. Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, a non-profit, volunteer-fueled organization dedicated to finding cures for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and improving the quality of life of children and adults affected by these diseases. Donate at www.crohn'scolitisfoundation.org. Lake Town Creations custom builds heartfelt creations using wood and other materials. Family owned and operated, they can turn your vision into reality. Allied Esports, running Wednesday through Friday evenings, Allied Esports hosts a trio of series on some of America's best short tracks, paved and dirt alike. Find Allied Esports on Facebook by going to www.facebook.com forward slash Allied Esports Racing Series. Baker Steel Detailing LLC provides custom shop drawings for fabricators. They specialize in miscellaneous metals, structural steel and ornamental metals, and they are WBE DBE certified. Acer Engine Supply for over 30 years has been rebuilding and restoring engines of all shapes and sizes in the Colorado Springs area. Today, their attention to detail and commitment to customers remains unchanged. From restoring an old classic to getting your daily driver running again, Acer Engine Supply will get you back on the road. Visit them at acerengines.com. TTC Corta Madera, California Full Spectrum UV Treatments and Custom Organic Sugar Based DHA Airbrush Solution. The only salon in the U.S. to offer these services is the Malpias Tanning. Red Light Therapy, Blue Light Therapy beds available with a doctor's recommendation. Check them out, Malpias Tanning. And of course, we have our own partners here at Pit Stop TV, Tucson Sound Art, the usual, basically. Of course, uh, you can send them any image. And I'm saying any image, be it uh, high school graduation. I know college graduation is very, very popular this time of year. Of course, weddings are coming up uh, throughout the year. Anything, a race win, even on iRacing, could be what you decide to send to 
uh, TucsonSoundArt.com and to put on your uh, wall-mounted sound art device today. It's a fantastic little device. Now, I say little, you can get massive sound art devices as well. They're easy to mount on your wall, very easy to keep charged. Uh, you can use batteries if that suits your fancy. Again, just a fantastic device. Sounds great, looks great, and a longtime partner of Pitstop TV. And you can use promo code Pitstop TV at checkout for 10% off of your order. These broadcasts are also brought to you by Race Pay Setups. You can go to their Discord link bottom right to check out their setups for any races coming up. I know the Open Indy 500 is coming up. We've got uh, plenty of GT3 races coming up, be it the Creventic Endurance Series. There's, uh, of course, well, it'd be GTD, but GT3 setups for the uh, iRacing 6 Hours of Watkins Glen coming up. Plenty of reason to check out race pace setups. These broadcasts are also brought to you by Permanent Makeup of Cryo in Maine, where you deserve the best care that money can buy. By Whiplash Media, the official graphic and camera provider of Pit Stop TV, and by BAM Racing Videos, by a race fan for the racing community. Warm-up is starting to wrap up. Just under 30 seconds to go. If you're curious, James Truett has gone fastest so far in this section. You see his number five Hello Kitty machine uh, working around the final corner now. Throws it into turn nine, a little bit wide, but gets through it anyways. And actually, that's just changed because Robert Schwenkler has just gone fastest with the help of Mike Sorum. And I said the draft wouldn't be as big of a deal this evening, but these two drafted three-tenths clear. No, five-tenths clear, it looks like, of James Truett. So, we'll have to watch for that this evening. We could see a couple of guys tandem away from the rest of the field in Tango up in the front. We'll see how that possibly changes throughout the evening. But warm-up wrapping up, we will move straight on into our gridding process then. Starting on the front row, qualifying fastest this evening is going to be Robert Schwenkler in that 235 car. Can he make up the points he needs on Mike Sorum? These two are going to decide second and third places in our championship, JP. That was going to be amazing to see. In third place, we're going to have Adam Thompson, our reigning champion for this season. Right alongside him in fourth place, we do have the 37 of Jimmy Howitt. Starting fifth this evening, it's Robbie Lorill Road, or not Road Course, uh, Rallycross Ace. I knew the word would come to me. Rallycross Ace now moving over into some Miata racing. We'll see how he does this evening in the number 213. He'll start alongside James Stewart, who showed a lot of speed in that quick warm up. Starting off in 7th place, we do have the number 81 of Jaden Darling, and right alongside him in 8th place, the 87 of Gary Ennis. A little further towards the rear of the field, Scott Benavidez will start 9th this evening, Chet Duranic 10th, and that's your top 10. And riding off the grid, we do have an 11th place, Tyler Coates in his 407 Miata. And I was just checking out the YouTube chat. I got to say hello and welcome to uh, Ashley Mono watching in the chat this evening. Glad to have you. If you are watching along Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, wherever you're watching from this evening, uh, hit us up in the chat. You can even tweet to us at PitStopTV underscore. You can post on our Facebook if you'd like. Get in contact with us. Let us know where you're watching from. Just say hello. We always like communicating with you guys, just talking to you guys throughout the race evening. And we do have a bit of an enduro to get through this evening, so plenty of opportunities to possibly talk to you guys. So by all means, hit us up. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know who you're pulling for this evening as we get set to go for, again, well, it was initially, it was supposed to be 60 laps. That's the information I was handed. It's been cut down. We're running 45 laps this evening. That could change things up, but I we should still see that pit stop, and that, I think, will still be a fantastic little dynamic. A spanner in the mix, as you always like to say, JP. That'll change things up a good little bit. But pacing through the final couple of corners this evening at the summit point, Jefferson Circuit reverse. The best way to run the Jefferson Circuit, in my opinion. We're getting ready to go for then 45 laps to... Not quite finish off the championship, but get darn close. It's the penultimate round of Cross Series League Racing and out of turn number nine for the final time before letting these Hornets go crazy. You see the green flag down the left side of the speedway, down the front, stretch it across the line. We are green. And down the back stretch, Robert Schwenkler leads. Adam Thompson quickly up to second place. That moves Mike Sorum back, and we're going to have to follow that little points battle throughout the course of the evening, but Schwenkler leads over the hill. 
In fact, we have perfect start for the championship leader. The, champ the champion jumps quickly into second place and he looks very racy already, putting pressure on our pole sitter, Robert Schwenkler. He's less than three tenths of a second behind and he's definitely going to be applying pressure as Mike Storm seems to be dropping back ever so slightly on the first lap. But just as I mentioned, that commentator's curse looks like Adam Thompson went wide and unfortunately he hit the only barrier on the circuit. Looks like his car is undamaged though. Yeah, we were just saying a little while ago about how it's really hard to find a wall to hear, hit here at some point Jefferson Circuit. Well, he found a way to do so. Let's take a look back and let's find out what happened to the 244. I think it's pretty cut and dry. He was following Robert Schwenkler. Couldn't quite hang on this first lap. Makes a small mistake and goes off in turn nine. You see, this is the approach and into turn six. Right on that inside curbing. Good line. Throws the car a little bit sideways on these cold tires. Through seven, through eight, and the left-hander of nine, the car was already just weight shifted over to the left when he tried to turn into the left. It did not quite like it. Throws it into that quick little attenuator, and we are on our way. He continues on. Not a whole lot of damage. Yeah, exactly. Luckily for him, he hit, I guess, the tire barrier, so that was kind of lucky. Obviously, he's going to be continuing. I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing a charge through the field, obviously, right now in this reduced 45 lap race. But look at it as the grid is still very very close as we only finish off looks like lap number two and the grid is quite close we do have a battle for fourth place looks like for third place sorry as Truett just passes Howard on the inside of turn one that's going to be pushing the 37 wide but looks like he keeps it on the dark stuff and still holds off into p4 that was a good eye there, JP. These guys battling for the third spot on the racetrack. James Truett takes it for the moment and sets sail away from that 37 car of James Truett. Now, the points battle I was talking about, that sorted itself out pretty easily right now where Robert Schwenkler, sure, he would make up some ground, but not nearly enough. Mike Sorum still within striking distance and in second spot. So uh, the, the gains will be minimal there for the 235, but gains nonetheless. How it now has to worry about Robbie Larill, and we're only on the third lap of action this evening already, moving through three laps pretty quickly because there again sub one minute lap times we're looking at 54s 55s so far this one will buzz along quite quickly exactly with this amount of action this amount of play switching essentially overtakes we're gonna be flying through as we are already on lap four and look at Robbie Lirill just trying to close in the gap to Jimmy Howitt trying to get that fourth place the car seems to be a little bit loose looks like he's getting the tires up to temperature but one thing I was noticing Andrew on turn number eight the small straight the small transition between turns eight and nine looks like everybody's getting a bit loose as looks like the pink car the Hello Kitty car of James Stewart is also getting loose in turn four Everybody's hanging on to it for now. They were on board with the Texan, Robbie Larill, as he works into turn six. You see these guys struggling with grip, which actually brings up an interesting point. Well, we can take a look at the weather this evening, and you, you can see it's not too bad, but it is... Actually, I say not too bad. It could certainly be worse, but almost 90 degrees air temp gives us a track temp of 112. Now, the Texan, Robert the Real, may be used to that, but these guys are going to be slipping and sliding all evening long then. That is warm. 90 degrees almost air temp. That is toasty. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be good to get the tires up to temperature quickly, but after a while, you might see some overheating of the tires and that's not going to be helping with grip at all and these drivers are definitely going to be struggling at one point in time but looks like <laughs> for the time being everybody seems to be hanging on as you mentioned Andrew and the battle still goes on for positions. We're still watching 4th and 5th go at it. This is Jimmy Howitt defending over Robbie LaRail, and that 37 car stays in front for now of the 213. There's some mix-ups further back as Chet Durant gets passed up by the chrome horn, literally, of the 244 of Adam Thompson, who now moves up into the 7th spot. Jaden Darling is all over the back end of that 420 as well. This could be a nice little midfield pack. Yeah, exactly. We see Adam Thompson oh, right Chet now make Durant. Oh, as the 420 spins on the turn 9. That that's was a unexpected. That was. <laughs> you go ahead, Andrew. That was crazy. Yeah, that's a misshift, is what that was. You could see the way the car just suddenly pitched around as we were on board with uh, Jaden Darling. So that that's clearly what that was, and he's going to come in. He may have some engine damage that he needs to get repaired, uh, possibly with a fast repair. So Chet Duranic problems. He falls back now into ninth, but he's ahead of this guy, Scott Benavidez, who was our first to go one lap down. He must have had some kind of trouble, but he is just riding around at the moment. So a lot of ways to go. He could pick up some of those spots if he just keeps his car clean and keeps on moving. I think the positions will come. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure he had some problems at the start because I was noticing he was a lap down right at the beginning. As you can see, he's letting everybody through right now, so that's going to be a bit of a struggle in the beginning of the race, letting everybody through, but he's doing the right thing. And can we just talk about the evasive moves that the 81 pulled? Jaden Darley, amazing skill, amazing reflexes to avoid a collision and came out and scaped. Yeah, that was an impressive miss there from the 81 car. He's since fallen back. He may have had a spin of his own, actually, as uh, he's now five seconds behind Tyler Coates, who is in a nice little battle with Adam Thompson. These two starting to get a little bit handsy and starting to go at it. The 407's got a run on the 244. We might see a move into turn four. And Tyler Coates looks to the inside, shows his nose. He's going to make that move? Possibly no. He backs out just enough, and I think that was helped by the outbreaking attempt there from Adam Thompson. Those rear brakes in that 244. 44 have been glowing since warm-up. Adam Thompson was extremely brave to cut off the door on turn number four. He was taking the racing line and he was having none of it. <laughs> and, well, he keeps the position. He keeps charging through the field, now finds himself in eighth place. But if a mountain to climb over eight seconds behind Robbie Larill, and if he continues the pace that he showed in practice in qualifying, He's definitely going to be catching those guys up as it looks like now the 407 is struggling to keep up with the reigning champion. Well, he's the current champion, not quite crowned just yet, but has clinched it outside of some really wacky scenarios. I mean, hey, he could go and get himself penalized and DQ'd this evening. Who knows? Maybe then we do open up the possibility, but that would take a lot, a lot of points uh, and a penalty and then a gain then for Mike Sorum. We'll see how things go, but Adam Thompson is looking to be uh, our champion. We'll, we'll officially crown it next week at, at uh, Laguna Seca, but at least based on points, he's clinched it. It's just not quite official. It's a little bit unofficial still, as Robert Schweikler still leads this field. Everybody's gotten pretty spread out. You can see it in the timing on the left side on our ticker. Everybody's pretty decently spread out. The closest gap now is actually second and third. And it's this right here where James Truitt is working to get up to Mike Sorum. And for Robert Schweikler, this is exactly what you need to see. And I know these guys were talking about Jerry DiPiero being the guy to beat in the Miatas. He is not here this evening again, taking care to uh, Bobby Ross this evening. But I think Schweikler was, was easily the other guy to watch out for, and he's showing it. Yeah, exactly. He's put in an absolutely amazing performance. We're only on lap nine, but he has over a seven second gap to second place. That is a huge gap and just shows the pace that he's having right now. So he's absolutely storming ahead over 7.3 right now. So he's just going to keep increasing that gap as these two looks like they're going to keep battling because James Truitt, he's definitely fighting back for that. I guess you can call it poor qualifying session of his, but he's definitely looking like he has the pace, at least for second place right now. I do think he must have under underperformed a little bit, but Truett still looking pretty speedy this evening. There is a battle starting to shape up right here. Lorel has gained up on uh, that... Uh, 37 car of Jimmy Howitt and they're going to work by Chet Duranek now I think that's why the 213 and suddenly made up a lot of time and he's using that draft now as well to see if he can gain even more time so battles as quickly as they spread out they're right back together and these guys are going at it pretty good now for fourth spot I, I think it's only a matter of time until Laril makes a move yeah, exactly. Uh, looks like Chad Tyrannic is not having any of the blue flags right now. As it looks like, ooh, he's going to be forcing his way through just like we saw in Nindy last night, if you catch that. So, oh, looks like they both got through and that's going to help out the battle. As it looks like that's Lyril, sorry, that's kind of tough name to say. And he looks like he cut the chicane, so he might have a time penalty on his hand. As it looks like Chad Tyrannic is having none of the blue flags that are being shown on his display right now. I wonder if Laril might give a nice little boot to this 420 car at some point because he's got to be getting annoyed. He was all over the 37 car, and that gap has now widened up larger than it ever was before. It's over a second and growing. Now a second and a half, and I mean, he has completely lost touch at this point with Jimmy Howitt. This has got to be pretty painful if you're Robbie Laril. I think the only solace you can take in this is you've still got a lot of racing to go, and this is just one little hiccup along the way. Yeah, exactly. He saw that gap closing due to the lapped car, but unfortunately he's seen the quite the opposite as right, right now he finds himself nearly two seconds and he's going to be pulling off the same move, but looks like they're going to be touching. So it looks like he gave him the bumper, but looks like Chad Derenic is still going to be ahead as Robbie Larill lost even more time to, th uh, to third place, uh, sorry, fourth place Jimmy Howard. 
And we like all these guys. We were friends with them throughout the week. We cut it up with them every once in a while. We hang out with them. But I got to say, it's actually Adam Thompson goes around out of turn number nine. Problems then for our champion as he's going to back up and get rided and continue on. I got to say, Chet Duranik needs to move. And oh, I think he may have just gotten moved as he goes off in turn number one. That may have just solved Robbie's problem. Yeah, exactly, we're going to be catching on the replay what exactly happened, but as we mentioned, it might have been the bumper that we all, I guess, know and love in NASCAR. We're going to be seeing as both cars exit turn 9. He's on the slipstream. As you can see, Adam Thompson completely losing on the back end of our video there again on turn 9. But looks like Robbie Lurill is going to be going no deep on the brick. No! No contact at all. He just lost it completely on his own. I guess fighting pressure from Robbie right behind. And, well, that's one way to give out the position after being lapped. Hey, that'll do it. Robbie Lurill will take that one. And again, I, I think he needed to move at that point. He had cost uh, the 213 over a second. And now the gap is almost four seconds between Jimmy Howitt and Robbie Lurill. So that really cost the 213 a serious opportunity to make up spots. And uh, I, I think Duranek needs to be told to, to abide by those blue flags. And again, we like all these guys. I'm not trying to just single him out, but that, that was really costing Robbie. Move on from that, though, lap 13. And, uh, well, 12 laps are in the books then, and Jaden Darling suddenly has his uh, his windshield full of another car again. And this is the first time he's had a car in a little while to chase because he had given up a whole lot of time to Tyler Coates. Now Adam Thompson goes for a spin -a And, well, Jaden Darling has this opportunity ahead of him. Exactly. Jaden, if he keeps this up, he can't catch up. Obviously, everybody can catch up uh, the champion right now, Adam Thompson, because he seems to be struggling. This is not a race that we're used to after the first few rounds. We saw him struggling a bit on the dirt road aspect, but, you know, this race has been quite, I guess, odd on his way because spinning twice on the same corner seems to be odd, especially since he's been the only car, as looks like the battle for second place is intensifying again as James Truitt closes the gap once again to Mike Sorum. And Sorum taking a wider entry. That's going to help him on exit if he can uh, execute, but he just didn't execute right there. That's uh, pretty well timing then for James Truitt. He's got an opportunity into the, one of the best braking zones on the racetrack, but he goes wide in six. He might cut to the inside then out of turn six, but the opportunity just doesn't quite present itself. That could be one of the best passing opportunities on the racetrack. That said, the cars get completely weight shifted over to the left. And I mean, obviously, you're you're turning to the right, so that's fine. But if you give somebody the boot, that is going to be the one place they simply cannot recover. They may not go for a spin, but they're not going to be able to hold it in front of you. If you give them a well-timed tap, you're getting that spot. Yeah, exactly. Turn six is an interesting aspect because if you want to take the racing line, you're going to have to go wide essentially and cut back in. But obviously, if a driver's right behind you, they can essentially just dive bomb them, their way into your position. And well, we're definitely going to be seeing some drivers trying that as looks like James Truitt got an excellent run out of turn four. He's going to be going on the outside of turn five and therefore the outside of turn six. Can he hold on to the position? Looks like he can. He's going to be forcing Mike Storm on the inside curb. It looks like he got the position, but they're going to be going side by side through the S's. And unfortunately, Mike Storm is obliged to essentially give up the spot for the time being. Mike gives it up for now, and I, I gotta say, James Truett did win last week. That said, last week's race at Lime Rock Park was, as we see Mike Storm come in and pit, this is interesting, a big undercut here. We should only see one stop. Maybe he's going for two, but uh, we did see a couple of safety cars affect last week's race at Lime Rock Park. Mike Sorum going to come in and take, I would imagine, fuel only. These tires, no, he's taking right sides at the very least. He could take all four. Exactly. This is extremely interesting because the tires on the Miata are supposed to last quite a while, and he seems to be taking at least... Oh, no, he's taking all four tires, so that's kind of interesting to see but could pay out could have fresh rubber could pay out at the end but only time will tell as Mike Storm throws out essentially a second place finish at this moment in time and I'm sure the tire is just convenient because it takes long enough for f uh, for fuel that you can get those four tires safely so it works out for Mike Storm and that I think sets the precedent for everybody else Tyler Coates also in the pit lane not sure if this is scheduled or not, but he is going up on the jack stands, so I would assume, well not the jack stands, but the jack, and so I would assume this is planned for Tyler Coates. Our race leader, Robert Schwenkler, has just lapped Jaden Darling, and Jaden Darling has not pitted just yet, so maybe a mistake then out of the 81 car. It could be, it could be very interesting, but 
you know, we see the pace of Robert. He's over 12, nearly 12 seconds ahead of second place. So he's just throwing a pace. And this might be what we mentioned, you know, just eventually catching traffic. And this might be the time where Robert is just catching everybody in the field. It's just going to be a matter of time when he finishes essentially the field at this pace. I noticed Jaden seems to be having some trouble with the gearbox. And this is something that you've got to take a little while to get pretty used to, um, to be quite honest. Uh, Definitely, the, the gearbox in these Miatas is tough. It, it is a proper stick shift. You, the proper H pattern, you've got to use the clutch on downshifts and upshifts. Like, you have to shift this properly. Uh, you can come up with your own little assists, and iRacing gives you the opportunity for some assists as well, as he runs a bit wide there in turn two. But, uh, excuse me, there we go. Uh, the interesting thing with this car is that we saw one car spin earlier from the downshift. You've got to get, you've got to time the downshifts perfectly to run these cars the fastest. I think you, you've got to use them for a little bit of uh, engine braking, but also to help pitch the car, help set the nose, and get your turn in. Right here in six, you can see the gear on the bottom right as well. But I'm listening. He kept it in third. He did not downshift the last lap. He waited until exit to downshift. I think that's something that he is maybe learning this evening. Now he's down to second, and that's something these drivers have to get more accustomed to if they want to start getting all the pace they can out of these race cars. In fact, we can check in with Robert Schwenkler and see how he's doing it. Exactly, and these cars is essential to get the maximum uh, the maximum time out of the car to rev match. So obviously, as soon as you downshift, you want to be blipping the throttle, not only for the gear to get in more smoothly, but also to essentially uh, make it smoother so the car doesn't react so abruptly. So obviously, iRacing, as you mentioned, gives you some assists, such as the auto blip that just helps you in that way. So sometimes these drivers, unfortunately, have all assist turns off and it makes take them a while to realize what they need to do and unfortunately that might be costing some drivers sometimes but that's definitely not the case with robert because he seems to be mastering at least the gear shift apart from everything else here tonight that's an early down shift a second i think he's got it certainly better than anybody else in the field he is leading this race by 13 seconds that's pretty clearly apparent uh but yeah even ashley mono watching in the youtube chat saying that yeah the, these gearboxes are tricky uh they are tough to get right most of everything is split up this evening but just as these two separated they come right back together it seems like laril certainly has the pace on how it he's just got to find the means with which to use it yeah exactly it seems it seems that way he just caught up the gap was over for a second once that blue flag, I guess, incident came up and he already closed that back down to nearly half a second. So def he definitely has the pace. Obviously, right now, the question is, where can you overtake? He might feel safe. I doubt it because he seems to be very racy, but it's very, very tricky to overtake. Obviously, the main points, turns five and six and obviously turn one. But if you're close enough and if you're brave enough, turn four is definitely another opportunity to make that moves taken. I'm pretty sure... Robbie's going to be taking any opportunity that he can to try and get past and obviously trying to catch uh, James Stewart for a potential P2 finish. It certainly depends on how physical you want to get with your competitors. I, I think turns one and uh, turn six are most obvious opportunities. Six just because it's such a tricky braking zone, even if you don't use the bumper. Uh, but it, you can also open up turns four and turns nine as the race goes on. Now, four is very quick, and you kind of just have to force somebody into a mistake. You've got, just got to take the, uh, the run from the draft. You can get it, but turn nine, particularly, you can just use your car against somebody quite honestly we could see we could see the bumper used in turn nine as this race goes on i'm also noticing these guys running a lot of rear brake the the, the rear brakes glowing on the 37 now as well you can see a little bit of an orange tint in the rear wheel uh very interesting these drivers running so much rear brake to get the cars around here you see that a lot in stock cars to try and I mean, they're stock cars they're heavy the brakes just aren't great but i'm really surprised that in miatas we're seeing so much rear brake yeah, exactly. This is definitely an interesting scenario that was I was actually noticing on the practice, as you can see, just the rear brake, brake pads, sorry, the brake discs are glowing. So it's kind of interesting to see the strategy behind it. Obviously, they might be just be comfortable with it. We're going to have to be seeing it looks like each and every single car seems to be going that way. So it's definitely an interesting strategy to run. Luckily for them, the Miatas, I guess the brakes aren't that powerful to lock up and make you spin under heavy loads. But it does help the car to essentially turn around quickly under braking as we do have a spinner on looks like turn six yeah exactly that's turn six and we're going to be taking a look at the replay right here tyler Coates has gone around in turn number six the question is did he get help 
We will take a look at what happens to the 407. He had Chedorana go off behind, actually. You see that? We can catch up with that in a moment. This is about halfway in the race now. And Coates just runs a bit wide, gets grass on breaking, and that is quintessentially how you spin a Miata. I, I think that's that's pretty much how we've all spun a Miata at some point, be it uh, iRacing or not. That That is very, very common. Yeah, exactly. That's the pace. I guess that's what everybody learns. And unfortunately for him, caught up at the wrong time. And now we're going to be taking a look at this pin from Chad Derenik that we just caught a glimpse on the previous replay. He's coming up on the up on the back straight, coming just under turn nine. And I just caught on the glimpse of my eye. He unfortunately just, by the looks of it, just ran wide, just a tiny, tiny bit too wide. And he just essentially replicated where we're going to see, as you can see, just dipped the rear wheel under braking. But that was an amazing save. He so, got it back on the tarmac. So a very similar issue, just in a different part of the corner, where we saw Coates have the problem on entry, Duranic had the problem on exit, and uh, both resulted in a bit of a spin, a bit of a slide, and that's how it happens. But, new race leader, James Stewart, by just a little bit over a most recently pitted Robert Schwinkler. I mean, that's the gap. These two are battling for position. Stewart's going to lose this spot as soon as he pits, as soon as he breathes wrong. In fact, might be hitting. No, he's not pitting there. He's going to lap Jaden Darling, but uh, it doesn't matter what James Truett does. This 235 is coming on the move to the inside of the 81. Wow! That was extremely that was late. late commitment. Yeah, you, you saw in the replay, he was ready to take the race line and just stay behind the 81, but unfortunately, the 81 had different plans, and he just darted down the inside of the late, uh, late move, and definitely brave, and luckily for him, no contact. Yeah, that was really late from Robert Schwenkler. That could have been the race thrown out, quite honestly. He, ooh, he he should be a little more careful next time, I think. Yeah, that, that was very, very bold from Schwenkler, but it works out. He gets by Jaden Darling pretty quickly, and the issues that Laurel had earlier, well, Schwenkler does not, so he gets to pursue that five car. But again, this battle will be sorted out very, very soon. As soon as the five car pits or just steps a toe incorrectly, uh, that 235 takes the race lead. There it is, Truett in the pit lane. So Truett gives up the position, the provisional race lead as he now pits. The question is, where will he emerge? Can he come back? Uh, essentially ahead of Robbie, or did he lose enough time to lose that at second place? So the Hello Kitty number five taking service, no tires it looks like. He's just taking fuel. I like this move from James Truett. That's something we haven't seen yet. Uh, although, looking through some stops, we may have seen a similar move from Robert Schwenkler. He only took 10 seconds in the pit lane. This is 20 seconds for James Truett. This is interesting, the difference in pit times. Yeah, exactly. This is all going to pay out essentially at the end because 10 seconds is a big, big margin, even though it's a kind of a slow filling tank on the Miatas as Jimmy Howitt now finds himself on the pit and looks like he's not taking tires as well. So different strategies being run all throughout the field. We're definitely going to have to wait until the end of the race in 20 laps time to see which one is going to pay off. But the question is, can the new rubber catch the deficit that costs you to switch tires on the pit stops? What I think is most interesting is we saw early pit stops take tires, and we're seeing late pit stops not. Uh, here comes Jaden Darling down the pit lane. We'll see what he does with that number 81 car. Does he go up on jacks? Does he take tires? This is a fantastic view of some of the paint schemes as well. He goes up on the jacks on the right side, so he is taking tires. Presumably four, I would imagine, especially considering I think the lefts get worn the most here. He's also already got that wheel turned to the right, ready to leave the pit lane. He goes up on left side jacks, and the driver out of California will take full service. That was a great point you mentioned, Andrew. The early stops, they did take tires, and it looks like the late stops, they're not. Unlike, obviously, the number 81 is the odd man yeah, out. He proved but us wrong. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> as we do have a battle, looks like Adam Thompson, he has not yet stopped and he's battling Mike Storm, which definitely is going to be trying to get past as quickly as possible. He's going to be looking on the outside of turn four. He is, but unfortunately, he does run out of road and not close enough. And he, he's definitely going to be lining up a move on turn five and turn six. Can he get to the inside of the champion? No, he cannot. But yeah, looks like Adam Thompson is still going to be holding these guys off as long as he can before he makes his top. And we're going to have to wait and see where... Adam emerges as he makes a small mistake, so it looks like on turn 8, that's going to be compromising a bit, but he still looks like he's just ahead as Mike's going to be getting the slipstream and he's going to be getting the best run into 2 one 
And I guarantee you, these guys are enjoying every moment of it. Mike Storm up the inside. Does he make the move on Adam Thompson? No, Thompson shops the nose. Now maybe some contact on exit. They try to go side by side. Sorum on the right side now of Adam Thompson. Can he hang there? Not quite. He'll fall back in behind. What does he do in turn number four? Does he look to the inside? Thompson will protect. Now moves over a little bit. Squeezes into the breaking zone. Sorum around the outside. No contact yet. And he has to set back in behind the 244 again. These guys have got to just be enjoying every moment of this. These are race cars that you can sling around with your buddies and pull some pretty rude moves on your friends and just laugh it off these are fantastic little race cars to have these little battles with this is awesome and in fact i can vouch for that personally even more so because this past thursday i ran with srca a, a league we used to cover uh last year in 2020 They've now got a Spec Miata series on Thursday evenings. I ran with them at Charlotte and Road America. We were doing the exact same thing, throwing big moves on each other, running side by side, making a little bit of contact, and laughing it off the entire time. These two friends are having fun. I'm sure they are because I'll be doing the exact same. You know, it doesn't matter which car on the Miatas is so much fun because the cars are so planted. You can have so much fun. As you can see, just how brave Mike Storm is on the outside. He cannot get the move down into turn four. Adam is just defending for his life at this moment. And I'm pretty sure he's just laughing out loud at this moment as Mike, even though he might be a bit frustrated to being held up. I'm definitely, I know, he's for a fact, he's smiling, as you mentioned. And you're, they're probably going to laugh it out loud on the general chat later on. And these guys are just having a blast, and we're glad to be commentating it because this is so much fun to watch as well. Yeah, these are the highlights, I think, of the week. Just these great battles that you have going on that, realistically, they don't mean a whole lot in the big picture. They're just these battles that pop up and are hilarious to watch and exciting to watch as well. It looks like Mike is going to have to sit back, and he's going to have to find another opportunity to get by this 244 car. But I think as time goes on, he should prove to be a little bit quicker, especially if Adam makes those mistakes that we saw him make earlier on. The other battle on the racetrack is this. Tyler Coates now with a mirror full of Chet Duranik, and we've seen interesting things out of each of these drivers. With a pace at times out of both, a couple of mistakes at, at times out of both. In fact, they had mistakes about 20 seconds apart or less from one another at this part of the course a few laps back. And Coates a little bit wide on exit of four, and the leader is coming. Exactly. I was just going to mention the leader is coming. Will Chad Terenic pull over for the blue flags, or he's going to be doing Oh, and he turns now, Tyler oh! Coates! He gives him the bumper. He stops on the apex. Looks like the leader had to take avoiding action as both drivers continue. Looks like Chad allowed Tyler Coates to be to go back and essentially retain his position but that was an interesting move late on the brakes and unfortunately found the bumper of the 407. I think he certainly realized his mistake as soon as he made it and just gave that back and decided to reset that battle and that is sportsmanship and again that's the kind of stuff that you like to see when these friends have these great Miata battles so uh, that, that just goes to prove our point a little bit further you might not always see that sportsmanship on the back side of a mistake like that now we're back up to this very chrome and very rear brake roasting 244 trying to defend from this 69 of Mike Sorum they're battling for fourth and fifth on the racetrack and Sorum took those tires along with fuel that's why he's so far back in this field but Adam Thompson has not pitted and Ron Bobby Larill has not pitted. That accounts for fourth for Thompson and second for Larill. So the, t the top of this scoring pylon is still going to change a lot in these last 15 laps. Yeah, exactly. But the question is, how fast is Adam Thompson? Is he slowing Mike Strom enough to essentially trying to get him essentially a free position at the end? Obviously, he's slowing himself down. Uh, as he's battling, but I'm pretty sure he does not care as it's so much fun on his side. But it's definitely going to be see interesting where Mike Strom is going to feed out after all the pit stops are done. And will this battle, this long and I guess just fun battle, cost him any positions at the end of the race? This is still just amazing to watch. 15 laps now, it's 14 laps. This is next time by the stripe for these drivers. And we'll go from the nose cam for Mike Storm. You see the 244 trying to keep that car clean on the inside, dabbing the brake as he needs to. Adam Thompson keeping that car as far right as he can to defend. But at some point, something's got to give. Either A, he's got a pit, or B, Mike Storm is going to come around this 244 car, and this might be where he does it. That's a nice little run for Mike Storm. You saw he backed up the corner and got the uh, got the launch. That's a carding move to sit back a little bit and get to the throttle a little bit earlier. Now he looks to the inside as Thompson defends. He's starting to blend the lines of what is and what isn't legal in road racing defense. 
And side by and side he now. now gets the inside line into the rundown into turn four. That's going to be essential to keep his position. But looks like he just lost a bit of that run. He's going to be forced on the outside. This battle is just amazing to watch. He's going to be later on the brakes. He's going to be forcing Adam into the inside curb. He now has half a car essentially alongside Adam. So he's going to be putting his car on the outside lane. He's just unfortunately going to be backing off into turn five. As it's nearly impossible to go side by side as Adam still runs that defensive line. And he's not giving up that position at all and he's going to be compromising a bit himself into the asses now obviously the number 69 of Mike Strom definitely wants to get by my uh, definitely wants to get by the 244 is yet again another mistake on the turn nine on turn nine and he's going to be on the defensive position back into turn one that's what Mike needed around the outside. Possibly no. The late breaking move from Thompson. Does he keep it on the racetrack? Just barely. But the crossover from Mike Sorum. He takes that spot. And Adam Thompson finally has to relinquish the fourth position. Boy, that was hard fought. And this has cost Mike Sorum a lot of time. It's not going to help uh, Robert Schrenkler quite in terms of points. But it's going to help him as far as, I guess ensuring he wins this race. Mike Storm is almost a lap down after all of this. Yeah, exactly. This this battle cost him a lot of time, but I'm pretty sure he, if he cannot win, he's going to be at least happy with himself because that was a textbook perfect uh, switchback crossover, whatever you call it. That was just amazing as finally Robbie Lareal, the number 213, comes into the pits and he's taking tires with only 11 laps to go. So that's definitely interesting from Robbie could cost him a few positions at the end and he, as you can see the leader right now it's coming so he's going to be a lap down again so the leader lapped the top five only four cars remain on the lead lap yeah i know these drivers are screaming for grip they're all sliding around but that's what makes me odd as fun and these tires can go more than an hour uh to be honest with you the grip is going to come from keeping temperatures low eh, and keeping the tires relatively underneath you uh, i think that's what these drivers are going to benefit from this evening if they didn't take tires is just tire control tire management and i think schwenkler's doing that as the rail goes off hey he's on cold tires for the first time in 35 laps he's now got to get those tires up to temp so that's going to be two probably three laps of tire management there where he can't quite go full beans and he's going to be a little bit icy yeah, exactly. So it's a pretty much the repeat that we saw in lap one. A few drivers struggling with tire temps. He's going to be struggling with that with a few laps. Oh, as you can see, another mistake Adam Thompson on again. turn eight. He's doing an Adam Thompson, but he catches it just before doing a half spin. But unfortunately for him, that's going to be costing him a lot of time. Well, we saw this battle earlier on, and this battle has since reversed hands, where Tyler Coates is trying to catch Chet Duranik. In fact, this must have happened on this most recent lap, because that bottom right graphic will update now to show Duranik in front of Tyler Coates. So what do you say is, wow, maybe we won't take a replay. I was going to say we'll take one, but they suddenly are right back on top of one another. Chet Duranik a little bit wide on exit, and Tyler Coates with that downshift pointed the car in the right direction. That's what I'm saying. You can use the downshifts to point the car where you need it to go, and uh, they can become strategic, I guess, cornering maneuvers, if you will. Uh, they can really help you as, wow, bumper to bumper now up over the hill. We see a revenge, essentially a payback for what we saw a few laps ago. Looks like he's not close enough as Chad Durenic runs a bit wide on turn six. He's going to be getting that switch back line, essentially, to shoot himself back into the asses as this battle heats up with only nine laps to go. So if you want to make a move, the time is coming up because you have less than 10 minutes to try and get as many positions as you can. And it looks like Tyler Cuts got their run down out of turn nine onto turn one. Looks like Chad Durenic's not going to be going defensive, just as I mentioned that he kind of moves over the second lane. And as, as looks like they go side by side through turn one, just as we saw last time out. And looks like Chad, unfortunately, has to give out that position and finds himself once again chasing down Tyler Coates. And finally, those two get reversed back around where Coates has the advantage. We'll see if that changes here in turn four, possibly throughout the rest of this 37th lap. Now, these guys, they are two laps down. So this is technically lap 35 for them, I believe. And there's a 10-lap difference in when these two pitted. It looks like Coates took tires and Duranic possibly didn't. Coates has a 40-second pit stop, a boot right there. But that might have even helped the 407 put weight on his nose and turn in. That's... I mean, you know what? He'll take it. They get to the corner fine, and they continue on. But, uh, yeah, it looks like Coates took tires. That's an extra 20 seconds in the pit lane. He took 42 seconds overall to Duranic's 22. 
That's a big difference, and I dare say that's why Coates has the grip, but I like this fight then that Duranik has put on, and he looks like he's still got speed, so again, I don't think tires were necessary. Yeah, it's definitely a controversial point at this moment in time. We're going to have to wait and see if eventually it pays back, but you can see just sometimes the grip is just a bit too much, as it looks like Chad Duranik unfortunately lost quite a bit of grip out of turn one, and he loses a bit of touch with Tyler Coates, but... Ooh, he goes wide into turn four. He has to slow down the car an extra bunch to make the corner. But yeah, looks like right now the tires could be making uh, a quite a good point. And as Adam Thompson right now finally comes into the pits, that track is probably dry at this moment in time. And I'm pretty sure he's not going to be taking tires. He may have had a problem. I'm not so sure because I saw the car slow way, way down on timing and scoring. Uh, I may also be crazy, but we'll take a look back at it and see if he did have any problem. He could have also sputtered out of the corner, and uh, this is coming into the pit lane. It looks like it's all controlled. He may have just overslowed at first, and that caught my eye, but yeah, he's all but stops right there, and I think that's just what got me. But, I mean, he was down under 20 miles an hour momentarily. It's a bad pit entry, essentially, for Adam. I'm pretty sure he didn't take tires, and we're just going to have to wait and see where he fits out because he's going to be putting qualifying laps at this moment in time. He feeds himself back out in P5. So expect some qualifying laps by our by Adam because he's definitely going to be trying to catch Robbie if there's enough time. Well, he's got seven and a half seconds to try and make up if he wants to get up to that 213. He did not take tires. Robbie Larill did. It's a matter of, of uh, whether or not Larill can get those tires up to optimum temperature or not to be able to use those tires to their, mo to their best advantage. At this point, who knows? I don't think we even know. I don't think I expected tires at all. In fact, I definitely didn't. And, and we saw a lot of tires taken this evening. Uh, we saw the one pit stop that we expected, so we'll check that one off. We've seen a lot of great battles, we'll check that one off. A lot of great lap traffic battles as well, we'll check that one off. But still a whole lot of unknowns this evening. We're coming up to five laps to go momentarily. And Robert Schwinkler, kind of a surprise, kind of not a surprise, is absolutely demolishing the field. Exactly, a nearly 40 second lead on lap number 40. That's nearly a second lap quicker on a sub one minute lap time. Oh boy, we've got this a smoker up here. I was just going to mention, did we have a barbecue on the racetrack? It looks like we just have the 81 on the pit, so maybe a downshift cost someone an engine. Jaden Darling with problems. And what do you say we take a look then at what happened to the 81 car? This is going to happen around the turn 4, turn 5 area because he came through the S's in a full fireball and smoke to boot. Well, not quite a fireball, but you get the point. Up over the hill... It's got to be a downshift into turn six. In fact, it was right there. I, I changed as it happened. Let's take another look back here. Uh, we, we changed cameras as he downshifted, as he money shifted right there. Pay attention here, viewers. Listen for this motor. It was right there. That's where it happened. So uh, he just downshifted a little bit too early. I talked earlier on about him actually trying to, well, needing to maximize those downshifts. And, well, he certainly tried. It just didn't quite work out. Exactly. If, even if you didn't, uh, I guess, uh, listen, you could just see the rev, the rev match, the rev counter essentially just topping out. And unfortunately for him, that's a big, big damage, as you can see, just smoking. Luckily for him, the engine doesn't look like it's all gone he looks like he just lost a lot of power but unfortunately that's going to be a lot of time on the pits if he chooses to obviously repair or replace the engine and just as i mentioned that he's back on the racetrack so i'm going to eat my words and i'm going to apologize well that motor definitely expired but these drivers get a fast repair now as we joined back to Jaden darling we had a problem for our champion we had another off for this guy adam thompson he's having some troubles this evening let's take a look what happens to him here in turn number one Sets the corner right, just overcooks it, goes completely into the grass, and boy, misses that barrier by the slimmest of margins. That was close. Exactly, that was kind of close, and that was almost close to meet up the two tire barriers that we have on the racetrack. So he was going to make it two for two, and I was going to mention it was cold tires, but he didn't take tires on his top. So just an odd mistake once again from Adam. Kind of an off race, I guess, for him, even though it's a P5 could be a p5 p4 finish but definitely an odd race for him 
Well, I can tell you what, Tire Strategy has sorted this one out for us, uh, along with some mistakes, because Robert Schwenkler did not take tires, and he added 10 extra seconds to his gap to James Truitt. Uh, that makes it 40 seconds now as we're working to the final couple of laps. In fact, he'll have popsicle sticks this time by the flag as he lapped Scott Benavidez for a fifth time. But uh, James Truitt, he took 20 seconds in the pit lane. It all happened in the pit lane, pretty much. Uh, he's got 10 seconds back to Mike Sorum. Those two would be battling had Mike not taken tires. I, I truly believe that. They are 10, well, 11.9 seconds apart. But, of course, Mike Sorum then got into that battle with Adam Thompson that he would not have been in if not for taking tires. So I think some of these drivers will look back at this and if they ever run a Miata race like this again, they will definitely have to take some notes on taking tires or not. And I think the answer is not. Uh, some other examples of things being decided. Robbie Larill, he is, well, he took, uh, I'm trying to gather this all in my mind. He actually gained time on Mike Sorum somehow in the pit lane, but I think a couple of mistakes have kept him back from the 69 car. Just a lot of separation at this point in the race when we saw everybody packed together uh, at least in their little duos of battles and it all happened on the pit lane as we take the white flag final lap for robert he was absolutely class of the field got pole led every single lap and he's definitely going to be leading off this final lap with a big big smile on his face as he makes the run down into turn one out of two into turn three into the back straight turn four just a small small 1.1 mile 1.7 kilometer drive for him to see the checkered flag once again i guess well this will be for the first time all season long robert schwenkler coming around to possibly well i would imagine at this point grab his first win of the season he's lapped all the way up to third spot mike storm the final car on the lead lap i don't think he's quite gonna get there but he's only a couple of seconds behind the 69 there he is up ahead on the left side he's not quite going to get there but Robert Schwinkler is going to exit turn nine at Summit Point. The Jefferson Circuit reverse as a race winner. All he's got to do is make it the extra hundred feet or so to the start finish line and collect that big dub. And Robert Schwinkler has a race win before the season ends. And just like that, he gets his first race win. And now we do have a over 40 second gap to P2. So James Truitt. He's going to be finished off in P2, finished P1 last week, so kind of a step down into the championship. As we do have a, someone, looks like Chad Derenic, running wide out of turn 6, looks like it. And he's going to be feeding off back on the racetrack as looks like the 81 also takes a small detour on the S. So quite a few mistakes on the last lap. Looks like everybody's allowing themselves a small mistake. As looks like now the, 30, the 37 of James Howitt is going to be taking off the flag as well. And the final car to come across for the podium will be Mike Sorum. Almost a full lap. He should be the final car to finish this race behind Robert Schwenkler. So our top three, the only cars on the lead lap. That's right, Ashley. Absolute domination this evening from your race winner. That is how you get a race win in style. Robert Schwenkler in every single lap of this race wins by over 40 seconds and we'll be talking to he and the rest of the top three very very soon. Don't go anywhere. Post-race coverage is just a few short moments away. Until then you got a couple of messages from our partners here at Pit Stop TV.
After months of quarantine, we're all interested in how we can become our best self. The team at Permanent Makeup and Cryo is here to help you get the flawless makeup look every day without the extra effort or time. When it comes to your appearance, you deserve the best care that money can buy. Sound Art introduces an entirely new way to listen to music in your home. By combining the best of two products, a revolutionary high-fidelity, low-profile Bluetooth wireless speaker with beautiful artwork. Select from a library of artwork or upload your own photos to personalize your experience. Sound Art ushers in an era of invisible, beautiful, and amazing sound throughout your home and redefines your entire entertainment system. The need to reclaim your floor space and rid your home of unsightly speaker boxes that need to be bolted to the wall is now a thing of the past. Our canvas is printed on high-quality permalite by breathing color. And select from our gallery or upload your own. Standard sizes include 16 by 20 and 18 by 24 canvas wrapped. Custom sizing is available as well as surround sound options. Welcome back to the Virtual Summit Point Motorsports Park this evening on the Jefferson Circuit, albeit the reverse version of the layout. No difference in the actual corner, is just a different direction, and boy, I, I love this course. I really do. I love this direction particularly, and it gave fantastic racing this evening. Pretty spread out. Pit stops definitely decided a lot of positions, but boy, we saw fantastic battles through and through, and it all led to our top three being crowned as such. Robert Schwenkler grabs the win this evening. We'll bring him in first and talk with a dangerous driver, and boy, you were dangerous atop the scoring pile on this evening, Robert. Grabbing your first race win and in dominating fashion yeah man i uh i put in quite a bit of practice uh i knew i was faster than most of the guys um unfortunately i knew jerry wasn't gonna be able to make it and bobby so without those guys here uh, i felt like i could uh pretty much run away with it and i did so i'm pretty happy with the with the turnout today Wins a win. Certainly like the uh, very confident attitude even after the fact this is a very dominating race win from the start of the race, you just took off and never looked back. You only missed one lap of the entire race atop the scoring pylon, only because of pit stops. And even when you got held back by pit stops for a moment, you were very quickly back to the race lead. I want to know, because we were talking about this for a large portion of the race, what was the decision-making like between taking tires and not? I think to I think because I'm in a Miata league on Thursday nights, uh, eSport Racer League. Uh, I kind of know what the limit is of the tires. We do races that are in similar distance to this one, so I don't ever take tires in those races and do fairly well. And so I kind of knew that I didn't really need to take them. And I had been practicing what the pit delta was, and so I knew the gap that I needed to have on whoever was behind me. Um, so either at least come out right behind them or come out in front. Um, and when I saw that Mike had pitted super early and James hadn't gone in yet, um, I just decided to dive in there and I knew I was going to come out right behind him and probably just get the, get the, uh, get the place back pretty quick. So yeah, it just, just worked out. I, I, unlike last week and I learned my lesson, so. <laughs> well, there you go. Learning lessons is always the point of mistakes. I got to say though, this tightens up that little battle for second and third in the points. And we've been watching those little, those few positions mix up a little bit uh, through the course of the season, mostly in terms of gaps. This gap is going to narrow a little bit. What's the game plan for Spec Racer Fords at Laguna Seca next week? It's certainly a very interesting combo. Uh, Yeah, I unfortunately don't have a lot of time in the Spec Racer, so I'm going to have to put in some practice. I know Mike is really good at those um, and good at Laguna, so I'm going to have my work cut out for me. Um, you know, I'm just just looking for good racing. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to uh, wish ill will on anyone, but uh, you know, if, if 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 Mike happens to crash or someone takes him out, you know, I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna be too sad about it. Hey, fair enough. A position is a position, am I right? Congratulations this evening, Robert. Who do you have to thank for this win? 
Um, big shout out to all our sponsors as always. Uh, Dangerous, uh, Nexus Fab, uh, Baker Steel Detailing. Um, yeah, my mind's gone completely blank. I'm pretty stoked about the win, <laughs> so I apologize, guys. Uh, big shout out to my girlfriend and all her support. Uh, uh, love you, babe. Um, uh, all my friends watching, and big shout out to Adam for all he's done for the league. It's he's done uh, a bunch of work for this season. Uh, without him, I don't know that this would be happening. And he's kicking ass. Use the language for second uh, for season two, getting that all squared away. So, yeah, man, I'm, uh, I'm just super stoked to be in this league. It's been awesome. Fantastic. Robert Schweckler grabs a big race win, and that car looks fantastic, too. If you could just take that and put that on all of your cars, that would be fantastic. I got to say, the bright orange certainly makes a statement, as does this race win. Congratulations. Soak it up. We'll see you next week out west for the final round of the season. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Robert Schwenkler grabs a W this evening, the first of the season for him. He's got another opportunity to do it next week. I imagine he'll be battling guys like we saw him battle this evening in James Truett and Mike Sorum. I'll pass things over to J.P. Costa with one of those two finishing second. So, James, obviously a fantastic result for you. Unfortunately, one place down from where you finished last week. But just talk us through this tar. How difficult was it on the start with colder tires trying to make up those positions? Obviously, you started six. So it's a great, great result for you to make up those many places. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, the main struggle point with the cold tires is just not the people in front of you, but more so the people behind you. You know, we're all struggling. We're all kind of sliding around. So... Those first couple laps were a little little hairy, uh, but you know, once we kind of all scattered out a little bit, it was it was pretty smooth. And pretty smooth it was because you finished a, a quite a healthy lead ahead of P3. So how was the overall race? How difficult was it to get the car settling on the racetrack and just keeping those lap consistent without making mistakes? Because we saw mistakes all throughout the field, Adam making mistakes. We saw pretty much each and every single driver make mistakes, but you kind of kept it clean throughout the throughout, throughout the race. Yeah, I mean, really kind of following a car in front of you helps out a little bit more. You know, there's no breaking points on the track, so it's all kind of knowing what you're doing, I guess. So just kind of following them helps out a bit. And I mean, honestly, the fight between me and Mike, that was that was really fun. I don't think I would have gotten by him if unless he pitted so early. And yeah, we're going to mention that the battle between you and Mike unfortunately got solved within the pit cycle. He got held up by Adam. He obviously took tires. What was your decision on the pit stop? Were you thinking about following him? You obviously stretched out, led one lap of the race. And were you thinking about taking tires at any one point? Or I guess, did you even think about that at any one point in time? Uh, no, I don't really think tires were necessarily in play for this race. Uh, mainly fuel. I mean, it's such a short track. Yeah, it's kind of harder on the tires with, you know, the tighter turns. But if you're consistent enough, you can really baby the tires to make it to the end like I did. And obviously, next week, we're going to be switching cars to the spec fours. What are your experience in the car? Are you looking forward to that race? Uh I'm hoping to redeem myself in another open wheel. Okay, fair That's enough. For sure. <laughs> That's definitely going to be interesting to see because those cars are extremely challenging. And who do you have to thank for your result? Uh, Got to go out with my uh, sponsor, Acer Engines. Well... That's great. That's everything that we need you for here tonight. That was amazing seeing you out on track. Congratulations on your P2 result, and I hope to talk to you next week. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That was James Truitt, and back to you, Andrew. James Truitt grabs that second place finish one week after leaving Lime Rock atop the scoring pylon. It was this guy, though, Mike Sorum, rounding out our podium. But, Mike, it looked like a couple of times throughout this race you had a shot for second place. What was the decision like to go ahead and take the pit stop? Well, take tires on that pit stop and uh, give up a little bit of time hoping you could gain it back. Hey, man, the car was running real good. I, uh, you know, I tried a little bit of a different pit strategy there. Uh, I took only two gallons of fuel uh, at the start, and I thought I would get tires and then fill it up for the end of the race, but uh, didn't really pan out. Uh, I thought... Getting uh, fuel and tires, I could still do a 30, pe 30 second pit stop, but uh, according to Adam, uh, he got out of the pits in like eight seconds. So that kind of, it was a bold move, but uh, didn't pan out. 
I can tell you if you'd like to know that the difference between you and Adam's stop was about 20 seconds, but you were still flying all this evening, and you certainly showed up, and even if the pit strategy didn't quite work out, you had speed, you showed you were here to race. Tell us about some of those battles, especially mid-race with Adam, for example. Oh, man, Adam and I had just an epic battle. I don't even know how long it was. I'll have to watch it back, but we were uh, fighting for five to ten laps. He was defending really well, putting the car in the right spot, and... Uh, we race together so much, you know, in practice and everything. So we uh, have that trust and respect for each other. So we know we're not going to wreck each other. But there was a couple uh, hairy little spots there where I thought uh, we might make contact. Ended up getting by him clean. And uh, that was an absolute blast. blast. I'm, I'm pouring sweat right now. Fair enough. We watched a lot of it. It was a fantastic battle you guys had. Certainly, I think, the epitome of Spec Miata racing. I got to ask, though, as far as points, let's forget some of the point this evening. You are going to use a few points to Robert Schwenkler, obviously, winning this evening, but you're still going to have the leg up on him. How do you prepare? How do you attack next week at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca and the Spec Racer Fords? Well, I'm... Uh, I'm pretty confident in the Spec Racer Fords. I, I used to run that uh, those officials a lot, so... I think I'm going to have a bit of an edge there. And yeah, I was, I was hoping, you know, the past couple of weeks, uh, I've had some unfortunate incidents that have knocked me, knocked me back. And I, I'm really happy with the podium tonight so that I can uh, hang in those points race. I'm just trying to hold on to second place because Robert was uh, extremely fast tonight. And uh, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to next week. Fair enough. Mike, before we let you go, of course, I want to ask, who do you have to thank? Who do you have to shout out this evening in the penultimate race of the season? Well, first of all, I got to say, uh, give a shout out to uh, Bobby Ross and Jerry DiPiero. Bobby uh, actually got a back injury uh, in a race this weekend, I believe. So he went to the hospital and uh, Jerry was his ride. That's why those guys weren't here tonight. So uh, shout out to them. Hope he's doing OK. Uh, I think he's he's going to be fine. And then, of course, shout out to you guys for broadcasting every week. XSLR for putting on just an awesome league. And then, of course, NodakRacing.com. And all the sponsors and you know it's i love this league hey we love to have you here mike congratulations on a third place finish this evening hopefully it's a couple of positions further north for you next week at laguna seca we'll see you out west uh, have a good one until then all right thanks guys mike so i'm taking a third place finish this evening certainly a strong showing again not quite maybe where he wanted to be but strong nonetheless as everything starts to come to a close here in this first season of excess lr competition we'll take a look at our unofficial for now race results this evening 44 laps going the way of race winner robert schwankler by over 40 seconds james truitt and mike sorum they round out the podium robbie larill and adam thompson both finish one lap down Boy, the battles were fantastic. Exactly, they were. Jamie Howard, it's the last car in sixth place to go one lap down after him. Pretty much everybody was two laps or over Tyler Coates and Chad Derenek in seventh and eighth, respectively two laps down. Jaden Darling, the only car three laps down. Scott Benavides running off a top ten five laps down. So incredible pace from a race winner. And Gary Ennis unfortunately could not take the flag due to hardware issues. So unfortunately for him, he finishes 46 laps down. It was a fun one this evening, I'd say for sure, at the Summit Point Motorsports Park. This was a date that I looked at on the calendar and just kind of went, hmm, I wonder how that will go. When they announced that it was officially going to be on the Jefferson circuit, boy, I was happy. You can dig through the general chat in the, the Cross Series League Racing Discord if you'd like. I was over the moon that we were going to race this course, and I think it delivered this evening. A few more cars would have been nice, but still a solid race here in round 15 of 16. Final thoughts from you, JP. What do you think? I was actually kind of doubting the race, but, you know, I'm happy to eat my words. This was amazing. If, you, if you're if you in doubt of a, a racetrack that you are thinking about running in MX-5, this just proved out to be a great, great racetrack. Big challenges, fun racetrack, quick lap times. It's just amazing for an MX-5, and I'm, I'm gladly surprised. So I think Summit Point delivers this evening. I think everybody can agree on that. The others who deliver here with Cross Series League Racing are our wonderful partners with the league. Of course, Nexus Fab, Precision Welding and Metal Fabrication, who provide custom medical fab... I keep saying medical. Metal fabrication, there we go, and manufacturing for commercial projects, residential projects, custom projects, sign, furniture repair work, you name it. Dangerous is a top 3D visualization firm specializing in high-quality 3D products, CAD, package rendering services, and photorealistic product visuals. 
They specialize in automotive subjects and have extensive industrial and consumer product experience. Let them help you visualize, promote, and communicate your designs. Visit their website at www.dangerous.net, just like it's spelled on our graphic. Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, a nonprofit volunteer fueled organization dedicated to finding cures for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and improving the quality of life for children and adults affected by these diseases. Donate at www.crohn'scolitisfoundation.org. Lake Town Creations custom builds heartfelt creations using wood and other materials. Family owned and operated, they can turn your division into reality. Allied Esports runs Wednesday through Friday and hosts a trio of series on some of America's best short tracks, paved and dirt alike. Find Allied Esports on Facebook by going to www.facebook.com forward slash Allied Esports Racing Series. Baker Steel Detailing LLC provides custom shop drawings for fabricators. They specialize in miscellaneous metals, structural steel, and ornamental metals. WBE DBE certified. Acer Engine Supply has supplied for over 30 years and rebuilt and restored engines of all shapes and sizes in the Colorado Springs area. Today, their attention to detail and commitment to customers remains unchanged. From restoring an old classic to getting your daily driver up and running again, Acer Engine Supply will get you back on the road. Visit them at acerengines.com. And finally, Tamal Pius Tanning, TTC Corta Madera, California, Full spectrum UV treatments, custom organic sugar based DHA airbrush solutions. They're the only salon in the US to offer these services. Red light therapy and blue light therapy beds also available with a doctor's recommendation. And this list keeps on growing. If you want to find out how you can get involved with cross series league racing, I recommend just go ahead and contact us. We'll point you in the right direction to get involved with league admins or if you Want to go through iRacing to get a hold of Adam Thompson 10? You can also do that. But I would certainly recommend go ahead and email me directly at Andrew at pitstoptv.com and I will point you in the direction towards Adam and Robert. I'll get you in contact with those guys and you can get involved today with Cross Series League Racing. But you can also get involved with us here at Pit Stop TV and we'll shout out some of those who have so far. Of course, Tucson Sounder, your picture, your music. Use promo code PitStopTV at uh, check out for 10% off of your order today. These broadcasts are always brought to you by Race Pay Setups. Use that Discord link bottom right to join their Discord server and gain access to not only fantastic setups, not only fantastic driver development, but literally tents that will just fall off of your lap times anywhere on the iRacing.com service. These broadcasts are always brought to you by Permanent Make McCryland, Maine, the official not the official, uh, where you deserve the best care that money can buy, I suppose, if you want to say the official permanent makeup provider of Pit Stop TV. That would work pretty nicely, and this is where I was getting the official line from, Whiplash Media, the official graphic and camera provider of Pit Stop TV, and finally, of course, buy BAM Racing videos by a race fan for the racing community. Certainly, I think a whole lot to talk about this evening, but we'll talk a whole lot more about it next week from race, sorry, WeatherTech Raceway at Laguna Seca for round 16 of Cross Series League Racing. Until then, that will conclude our coverage tonight of XSLR at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Pit Stop TV, thanks you for tuning in and joining us for tonight's action, and we hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. The channel stays active weekly, and you can catch a variety of racing throughout the coming days. Today's Sunday, tomorrow night, you can... Excuse me, you can uh, find the BRP iRacing series competing here on Pit Stop TV at 8 p.m. Eastern from the Lanier Raceplex with Pro Dirt Late Models. That'll be a fun one. That little 3 8 mile is one heck of a little bull ring, and those Pro Dirt Late Model drivers are going to have their hands full all night long from top to bottom, as well as the Pacific Challenge tomorrow evening at Hockenheim Ring in the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup cars. Tuesday evening, the Norc iRacing Series takes to Homestead Miami Speedway in the NASCAR Xfinity Series cars, otherwise known as the B cars here on the service. That should be a fun one. 134 laps should be the distance, I do believe, 200 miles. It will be fun for round number eight of 25 in the season. A whole lot is happening over there. I certainly recommend that you tune in Tuesday evening. That'll be 6.40 p.m. Eastern for the North Carolina Racing Series. Wednesday night, the BRPI Racing Series continues their asphalt modified tour, this time at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park before... Friday evening, we have the LTAC Cup Series from Phoenix Raceway as they get closer and closer to 
setting a playoff field of 16. So a whole lot to go through their season. And of course, as I mentioned, in one week's time, we officially crown the champion as well as every other points position here in the Cross Series uh, League Racing first season of action make sure to be there scca spec racer fords at weathertech raceway at laguna seca next week i almost said tomorrow evening no next week sunday may 23rd at 8 p.m eastern standard time Make sure to follow us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash pitstoptv, on Twitter at pitstoptv underscore, on Twitch at www.twitch.tv forward slash pit underscore stop underscore TV, on Instagram at pit underscore stop underscore TV, and on YouTube at www.com forward slash C forward slash pitstoptv1. For all of Pit Stop TV, JP Costa with me on the mic this evening. Uh, Emerson Arden on our social media coverage. You can get involved in the action as well by emailing me directly at andrew at pitstoptv.com. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening, and we will see you next time. Have a great night.